This is another sign of the times, an analysis and a commentary, a bad U.S. jobs report, and signs of a global economic slowdown hammered Wall Street Friday, wiping out the stock market's gains for 2012 and leaving investors wondering where to turn. The Dow Jones Industrial Average sank 275 points or 2.2 percent, chalking up its biggest one-day drop since November. The market index closed down 0.8 percent for the year and off 2.7 percent for the week. Market participants had expected to see a mildly negative employment report Friday, but they hadn't discounted the kind of numbers we saw this morning. Barton Biggs hedge fund manager Traxxas Partners said Biggs also warned that the chance of a mild double dip recession is now approximately 40 percent. I'm not that bearish about the economy and the market but am I ready to step in in a big way? No he said. Yes the gears of the global economy are all slowing in unison. The latest evidence came with the startling employment report from the Labor Department. Job growth slowed in May to just 69,000 and was much weaker in April than initially reported. The news followed a string of reports from Europe to China showing that growth in the world's major economies is fading away and when they stand up they fall back down again. Wow, this is ugly. Malcolm Poley, president of Stewart Capital Advisors, in response to Friday's jobs data. Some had believed that we had decoupled from China's slowing and all the problems in Europe, but that seems to be short-sighted. We're slowing alongside the rest of the world. Yes, everything is connected. There was little good news to be found in Friday's numbers. After adding more than 200,000 jobs a month in the first quarter. The pace of hiring slowed sharply to an average of just 73,000 per month in April and May. Analysts say the economy needs to create roughly 125,000 jobs a month just to keep the unemployment rate steady. The hiring slowdown last month sent the unemployment rate up to 8.2% from 8.1 percent, reversing a steady decline that began last summer. Overall, total employment remains about 5 million jobs lower than the level seen in December 2007 at the start of the latest recession. The Eurozone unemployment rate has hit a record high. Job losses there are expected to continue to climb as the ongoing financial crisis forces businesses to pull back and compels debt-burdened governments to lay off workers. Some 17.4 million people were out of work in the 17-nation bloc in April, or 11% of the working population, the highest level since records began in 1995. The EU's statistics office, Eurostat, said this 11% level is going to continue edging up in the coming months and probably until the end of the year, said an economist at Barclays Capital who sees the Eurozone's economy contracting 0.1%. Yes, the economies of the world are all interconnected now. Despite efforts by Europe's central bank to lower interest rates and revive growth, Borrowing costs have risen and banks have tightened credit as they hoard cash to weather the crisis. Consumer and business confidence has been sapped by ongoing uncertainty about the financial fallout from Greece, which threatens to destabilize Europe's banking system and plunge the Eurozone deeper into recession. Slowing demand from consumers and businesses in the developed world creating headwinds for China's economy. The last source of growth to 
support the global economy. Despite wage gains, Chinese consumers still make up a relatively small portion of the Chinese economy, so domestic spending is not strong enough to offset falling demand for exports. It is increasingly obvious that we are in the midst of a global economic slowdown. The ominous economic data from around the world raises the prospect that central banks will act to try to revive growth, but it remains to be seen how effective those policies would be. The U.S. Federal Reserve has already undertaken two rounds of pump priming with massive purchases of bonds to force rates to record low levels. In other words, there's something wrong with the economies of the world. Everything that must change, must change, quickly or rapidly, and for the better. Because it's about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations. And that should be a very important question to ask. This too is another sign of the end of times as we know them. Transition days, which is a time of extraordinary changes, happenings, and events. Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings and leaders of the east might be prepared. 13 And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. 14 For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings and leaders of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. 15 Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. 16. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. Yes. It's time for the physical and spiritual manifestation of the book of Revelation. And all these are more signs.